earth. So now we have something already that we can build upon. Let's do that, shall we? We have a couple of get requests and we want to test them because of course we don't want this get request to just return any data. We don't want it to return random data. We want it to return insane data. That's very important. So what we're going to do is we're going to on our get method and this one is one that I've already written on beforehand but I didn't have to and I'll tell you guys why in a second. So basically we start our test by indicating PM is the postmaster, post, is the postman um, extension that we have. So this is basically JavaScript that I'm writing here in this test, uh, in this test field. And you can write any JavaScript that you want, anything in here, as long as it's sane and it's a valid JavaScript, you can run it from here. Now on to what we have in here because I have several things. I have pm.response, so I'm watching Postman's response for this particular request and I wanted to have JSON, uh, th this particular thing in here. And I can also say, that, for example, I don't want it to have this in the JSON body. Now this test should fail. Um, basically it should fail. So let's remove that real quick because I want to show you guys something. We also have code snippets available and these are really, really useful. Now you can of course learn more about tests by clicking here, but these code snippets, let's say we want to get a environment variable or a global variable. We can very easily do that by just clicking here if we are setting our cursor on the correct point, of course. And we can say get a global variable and then he says pm postmaster dot globals which is the global variables of course and you're going to grab one of those keys from there really really useful because i can for example have this status code 200 test but let's say i want to log some things before i start my test maybe a variable i want to log that variable to see what its value is before i even start running now, what I can do for that is a pre-request script as well. Console.log is normal JavaScript and the PM, again, postmaster.globals.getURL in getting a global variable called URL. And I did this by writing console.log and clicking here for getting a global variable. Now, you can also set them, of course. And in here, in the pre-request script, there's also a code snippet for sending a request. If you go into the scripts, there's many, many more, of course. The status quo is 200, this one is often used. And that's what I meant by, I didn't even have to do this. I could just go like this, status quo is 200, and bam, I don't even need that, that, that test anymore. There we go. And then I can write different tests if I want to. Now, I can write different test conditions in here, or I could write a separate test, sometimes a test checks for several things. So you might want to check for a status code 200 and the content of the body, but you can also separate them and you can also say the JSON body must have something, let's say JSON body contains. And then this particular string, let's make it title. This should be the JSON body that I'm looking at right here. So. Let's see, I have, it should contain title. I'm going to remove this because that is already tested previously. And then I'm going to move on. And I want to say response body contains string. I'm going to keep it pretty simple here. I'm going to remove this. I don't need to copy paste it every time. Apparently the code snippet contains itself. So that's perfect for me. Now, Basically, I'm going to see body matches, which means PM postmaster dot expect postmasters expect module is running here and it's expecting this particular text here. So the response to include whatever we put in here. So let's make that title. There we go title. And then we have two test cases that we can look at. And now what's going to happen is you're going to see, first of all, two test results. Status code is 200 is a pass and body matches a string is a pass. Now let's change this to status code 201 just to see what happens when you fail. 
as you can see you get a fail message and you get the a message what's happening assertion error expected response to have status code 201 but got 200 so let's change this back real quick so that it actually runs but the title did run now as you guys can see i have in my pre-request still this console.log and you might be thinking okay it might be javascript javascript has a console we all know that where the heck is my console well guys i was a little bit surprised as well but it has a very bottom here you can see your console now i want to go into a couple of things for my console here first of all this is what i've been printing out this is just the value of my url then next on I can also open a specific request and look at everything from that request. I can do it on network level, but that's not interesting for me. I usually just go to request headers, request body, response body, all of that stuff. And as you can see here, that's easily possible. You can see exactly what response headers you had, what request headers you had. Uh, and you can scroll down for the body as well. There we go. So that's the body. This is what, what, what was in the body. Now, um, why might this be useful, I hear you thinking. This is super, super useful. If you're working with variables and you have no idea if your variable was correct, if what you're doing is right, then you can look into here and if the body doesn't contain the variable like you expect it to, then you probably did something wrong and you might have to rethink your strategy there a little bit so that was it for the console you can do a lot of stuff in here you can do a lot of debugging in here right now i'm getting a global variable but of course you can do any debugging in here that you want you can print your normal variables as well uh, you can print stuff from the response and you can print stuff from the request that's always useful so there are many things we can do here same for testing if you do this, I advise you to write a test every now and again, just to have a little bit of a practice. And I know it's not going to be super useful in bug bounties, but what this is very useful for is if we have our collection here, and I need to save this, of course, I can still run my collection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to collections, going to run this one specifically, but I don't need these guys. I only want the put request. Let's take it at that. So we're going to run, there we go, one request made, and I took the wrong one. So let's run again with the proper one. Uh, let's take them all, it's better that way. So let's make a new run, uh, and let's just take them all. So one of them is going to have tests, and you'll see what that looks like in a second. As you can see, this is the run summary, and in here you can see that your body matches string passes, and your status code equals 200 passes. That's some good news and runner, we can all check that out and we can see what we can do there. Now, as for the runner itself, you can, you can tell him to do a lot more iterations than just one. You can tell it to do whatever iterations you want. Of course, there's a limit there. I'm not, I haven't found it yet and I wouldn't advise you to find it either. Uh, and then of course you have a delay which can be set. That's very useful because sometimes some strange caching mechanism might be in, in place or some weird stuff. So sometimes you really need that delay and also to keep your requests to a server to a sane level, not too high. I mean by that, of course. Now, when you run, you can run with a data file. I haven't shown you this and I won't show you this right now. I will make the next video about data sources. Right now we are running with basically very static data. So we can select data files and grab our data from those files while we run. Um, but that's something that I can spend some more time on than just five minutes. So you can save your responses. Very useful if you're debugging, if you want to know what's coming out of it. Keep variable values, also very important to know just what's going on. Run collection without using stored cookies. This one is also very interesting because some web servers will behave differently. If you've already been to that web server, even just being there can make the web server behave differently because it can put a cookie in your browser and that particular cookie might, might tell the website, hey, this guy has been here before. Um, and well, you, I'll let your imagination run wild on what can happen then. 
Uh, a little bit of run there, so you can also save your cookies after the run. That might be important because you might want to know in a log setting, so logins might be enabled. And you might want to know what that cookie did, for example. You can always trace back cookies then to this particular user, so always useful for me, I keep it on, um, but it's up to you guys. So basically that's it for this episode. Thank you all very much for watching. I really enjoyed doing these stuff like with Postman and exploring some other tools. If you guys enjoyed these series, please leave a like and a comment and I would love to hear from you. I really would just, just tell me what you think. Even if it's a terrible thing, just let me know and I'll make sure to try and fix it for you. But please just be constructive, of course. Thank you everybody so much for watching. This has been a blast so far and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye amazing hackers.